Technology is rapidly moving us. Well, I guess the only way to go is forward. Of course, with the advancements of technology in every industry, we've seen a lot of failure, some things that are worrisome, some major challenges along the way. But of course, we've also seen major triumphs and successes in research and application of technology that has changed the way that our society works. And a lot of the time it has been for the better. It has made things simpler, made things easier, made things more effective, and has helped us progress in a lot of ways. When it comes to EVs, a clear example of technological advancement, we've seen how their growing adoption and how we've adopted them into our world has changed the way that we do things, the way that we get around, the way that our governments work with our transportation systems and more. And everything from little to big scale things, including recalls. The way we do recalls has totally changed due to the ev evolution of EVs and the software advancements and technological advancements that have come along with them. With over-the-air updates, also called OTA updates for short, no longer does every recall mean that you'll need to be without your vehicle until the safety fix is enacted or until the defect is rectified by your local dealership or your service center. No longer will you have to coordinate with your local dealer to get a loaner or just basically take time out of your day, week, schedule to get your car that you bought or leased and wanted to be reliable and exactly what you paid for fixed and restored to the condition that you need it to be in. Over-the-air updates are key to a recent recall wherein Tesla had to recall over 54,000 Model X's. So I will share the recall report here if you are tuning in online and can read along with me. So this was submitted on October 11th of this year, just a few days ago or a little over a week ago. And the number of potentially involved Model X's is 54,676 with an estimated, estimated percentage affected being 98%. So the production period that we're looking at is it spans three years from February 11th, 2021, all the way to September 27th, 2023. So it's model year 2021, 2022, and 2023 Model X vehicles that have this defect that we are noting. And if we want to dive into the details, which of course we do, there's an issue where this large batch of Model Xs are failing to detect low brake fluid. Without a warning light, the report reads, the vehicle may be driven with low brake fluid, which can reduce braking performance and increase the risk of a crash. This specific report is also interesting to me because unlike some that I have seen before, the chronology here has been laid out by Tesla in their report. And it goes from September 19th all the way to, not really all the way, but a couple weeks later to October 10th, uh, all in this year, where they've chronologically ordered the sequence events as at least they wanted it in this report. And they note that they completed an investigation. They found the root cause and confirmed it. And they found that no one has been hurt due to the, this defect, as, as far as Tesla is aware, and noted that they actually didn't find any field occurrences that were identified in their data by the investigation that their engineering and product integrity teams who looked into the field data saw. So they did have, they have a lot of obviously data to look at. Tesla is all about data, tremendous amounts of data. We probably don't even know how much data they have and they use it for things like this to really be able to dive into what, how these fleets and customer cars are doing out in the field. and where these issues lie and really dig to the bottom of it, which is pretty cool. Overall, the problem here is clear. The vehicle controller may fail to detect the instance of low brake fluid and won't thereby warn the driver of the issue, which is a failure to comply with the Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standard number 135 Light Vehicle Brake Systems. Luckily, Tesla has a seemingly quick and easy remedy to this problem and it is an over-the-air software update that is free of charge to owners of course and the owner notification letters are set to be mailed december 12th 2023 or folks can reach out to tesla beforehand specifically the software release 2023.32.7 or later tesla said corrected the condition by correcting the vehicle's controllers set threshold range at low brake fluid levels and tesla said that they began deploying the over-the-air solution to the vehicle fleet on september 28th they added a note about those vehicles operating fsd beta 
or I'm screwing, not offering, but operating FSD beta software releases wherein the aforementioned remedy will be included in an upcoming and regularly scheduled FSD beta software release. So no matter the model or the FSD beta or non FSD beta model X that you're driving, no service visit is necessary for either. But owners do need to make sure that they get this new software installed. So like I pointed to earlier, this recall, which has standards and safety concerns, it's fixed over the air. There's a bit of action to be taken by owners to ensure that they're getting this update, that they have the right version of the software installed on their vehicle, but it's free of charge to them. There's no trip to the dealership or the service center needed. It's pretty convenient. We recently saw a recall from Nissan Aria where bringing those vehicles into the service center is required. The reason we're not really sure, but perhaps it's just because they don't have the kind of experience or maybe the capability to do this over the air updates with full confidence that it's going to fix it. Not really sure. I'm not on their team. I'm just guessing. So folks have also, this is this has piqued a, some interest to folks wondering, well, is it really a recall if you can just fix it with an over the air update? And if you want my personal opinion, Yes, uh, I don't think recalls are directly tied to the solution. Uh, whether or not you bring the car into the dealership or the service center is not what this is about. Uh, it's about the defect at hand. And that is what is a recall. So it's, you know, the level of concern over a recall can definitely vary, but it is the issue at hand. So uh, like I said, I don't think recalls are tied to the solution that needs to be applied, whether it's in person or at the at the service center or an over the air update, it's still a recall. That's my two cents, take it or leave it. Obviously in the future of EVs and in the history of automaking, recalls were, will be, remain a constant. And the level to which we should be concerned varies. The solutions may vary as well, but probably become more software oriented perhaps as we see that develop, but it's those automakers with experience with over the air software updates that have the confidence, the experience, the data, and the background to be able to enact these with confidence over the air to get their drivers back to the right spot on the road. And we'll just be able to see this probably continue to be a competitive advantage, of course. Over the air updates will also be able to help automakers to resolve issues before there's a big issue, or maybe not exactly over the air updates, but software monitoring, major data collection, to be able to identify issues before they're widespread and fix them with software updates as soon as possible. So perhaps recalls aren't even really necessary. I was reading an article here that I will share as well. Um, so this is from ABI Research and the title of the article is by 2028, automakers will save 1.5 billion US dollars using over the air updates to fix recalled cars. And this is just an interesting question of competitive advantage, but also strong business cases for over the air updates. And I'm going to qu quote Dylan Koo, a smart mobility and automotive analyst at ABI Research who had this to say about over the air updates. There's a strong business case for remote updates from cost savings available in the short term. In 2023, OEMs are expected to save nearly $500 million from over the air recalls in the United States, but revenues from over the air subscriptions will only be about $100 million. To remain competitive, OEMs must embrace over the air software updates and be capable of using them throughout the vehicle. So overall, this is a pretty interesting topic. It's another part of the technological aspect of EVs that is going to be competitive. And like Ku said, Ko, K H O O said in this uh, article, it will be a competitive advantage, not only to start investing in it, but to be able to apply solutions with over the air updates throughout the vehicle so that folks can conveniently, as long as they have connection, get the software update and solve their issue. So we'll continu continue to keep an eye on how automakers embrace this new technology, how they address key issues that arise and recalls that are bound to happen that aren't always the biggest deal and maybe even are lesser and lesser deals with the advancement of over-the-air updates. So let me know your thoughts on this subject. What do you think? Have you had an over-the-air update that just was simple and easy? I bet you have, but maybe not. And thanks again for tuning in to the Out of Spec podcast. We will see you next time. Let me know what topics you want us to cover. But for now, if you're enjoying it, like, subscribe, leave a comment. We'd love to hear it. Tune in next time on the Out of Spec podcast and have a great day.